Many a times I've been asked, what's your opinion? What's your position regarding the insecurity ravaging Nigeria as a whole? My answer to them, and for clarity and for record purpose, hear this. That Nigeria had become a country where security formation, security operatives are more insecure than those they are meant to secure. It is a clear sign that the Nigerian government under this administration have failed in their primary responsibility to protect Nigerians in Nigeria. And to why there is widespread of insecurity. And I ask them, I, re, I answer this question by asking Nigerian state, why wouldn't Nigerian unemployed youths take up arms when the federal government encourages violent actions by rehabilitating those who they called repentant terrorists that have killed many Nigerians. So it has become a motivation for unemployed, suffering, vulnerable Nigerian youths who are victims of Nigerian state to take up arms because if they kill more, they will be called for negotiation. If they kidnap more, they will be paid ransom. If they decimate more people, they will be granted amnesty. And some of them may even be given foreign education sent abroad for more training as a reward for killing Nigerians. Why wouldn't more people take up arms when they are seeing the federal government playing or romancing or petting criminals in Nigeria? Terrorists. And Dino Malai, not Dino Malai, sorry, Rino Omokri, who is the champion or the leader of Haras Bugari out of London, stated it in a simple term. Okay. I mean, how can we have Nigeria having be, been the third most insecure country in the world? Syria is a war-torn country. Syria is more secure than us. Only two countries in the world are more insecure than Nigeria. That's Afghanistan and Iraq. How can we have that? Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, that leads me to the fact that the, pres uh, the present administration, uh, they've um, alleged on several occasions that the security challenges they inherited from the previous administration is the primary cause of the widespread violence being recorded now. And uh, to a large extent, you are part of that administration at one capacity or the other. What can you say about that? That is not true because this administration, you cannot be a judge in your own case. So you, you, they cannot say that and I cannot say that. The only people that we can quote are the Global Terrorism Index. The Global Terrorism Index is based in Europe. It's, it's, it's not PDP, it's not APC, it's not opposition. It's a European body and it's the only body in the whole world that is given the mandate by the World Economic Forum as to adjud adjudicate on which countries are secure or not. And then the Global Terrorism Index said Nigeria was less secure under the previous administration that we are more insecure now. I mean, this is six years into this administration. If you are still blaming past administrations, then you should just pack your bags and go. Because that's an admission of failure. When you're blaming others, you are saying that you are not in control. And that's what it is. Former President Jonathan did not blame, he took control. I mean, former President Odisha Kovacic did not blame, he took control. Why is this man blaming? He did he, he, he not elected to bring cause, he elected to solve the problem. Yet, the problem is now becoming worse under him. Before, we had Boko Haram, we had contained them to the northeast. Now, we have, you know, there's mayhem in Nigeria. You have Boko Haram in the northeast, you have bandits in the northwest, in the north central, you have killer headsmen. Then you have um, a, a, the challenge that you're facing in the southeast, and then in the southwest, you've got in uh, Sunday, Bo saying that okay, 
he wants to declare Odidua in the Republic. Tell me, where is safe in Nigeria? At Azor Rock, there was a shootout between the president's wife, um, Aisha Muhammad Dibuari, and his, and his um, nephew, Sabi Itunia Yusuf. So even the presidential villa is not safe. And his, the president's wife had to run to Dubai. She now lives in Dubai. She came back because she wants to launch her book. But she lives in Dubai. So where is safe? If after six years, you are still blaming, come on, six years. You see that? You had that? All right. He is not the only one with that opinion. A human rights activist and organization have also lent their own voice on this issue. So make you not know think, say, don't let me, they talk him. A governor was attacked. The governor of Benin was attacked. A group came out and said, we did it. Whatever group said, we did it. What has the police done? What has the, uh, the, the prison done? Has the prison ordered his arrest? What kind of country are we running? How can we run a country of two laws? A country where... One criminal is better than the other criminal. One criminal is to be reintegrated and paid and treated uh, uh, very well like a big man. Then you have another set of criminals that must be killed, even without formal trial, even without investigation. Just on hearsay that some Akarasellas on the street said, I pop this. We are not concerned whether it is, whether the government is saying it's I pop. We don't care whoever is called I pop. We don't even believe in this integration of Nigeria. We believe in Nigeria. So we, as human rights rights association Nigeria, do not believe in what the IG has told us, in what the president has said through Gamba Show. Not even the president saying it. The president did not even hand over. We don't even have a president as we speak. The president went somewhere where he is. We don't know where he, wherever he is. When the, those who were protesting in Abuja House, when they went there, the president didn't show up to address them. Even those who were hired by the government, to, to demonstrate on behalf of the government. The, nobody from the government uh, establishment, the government house, Nigeria, came out to address them. So we don't even know where the president is. So Gabba Shell is just in one corner issuing his press statements. The IGP is just in one corner. Now, the so-called government attacked strategic national security assets. Whoever you say they are, we don't care. Whether you say they are local masquerades, you know, we don't care about that. No state actors that are armed invaded strategic national security assets. Police checkpoints, military checkpoints, uh, the uh, force, CIA, the, we are the police detained high profile robbers and offenders, and over the prison where you have. People who are even facing capital, uh, who, who are there because of capital offenses, who are killers. Even though a lot of them are awaiting trial uh, inmates, but we also have convicted felons, killers, assassins, different kinds of people, they are there. Suddenly, some people went and attacked such an establishment that belongs to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, belongs to government. The president who is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria doesn't seem to understand the meaning of the functions and powers of the army, the police, as statutorily provided for in the Constitution. You have persons from the army, persons from the DSS, persons from the police who are in charge of Imo State Command, who are in charge of the respective commands in the Southeast, in the South-South, some of those states where officers have been killed, most of these officers that have been killed are even Igbos because the way Nigeria works, if you're in the police, if you're in the fire brigade, if you're in the uh, prison service, what most people do is when they are going to post you out of Abuja, which is the most the, the juiciest place to serve in any government of federal government office you want to serve, people always work their postings to a place very comfortable to them. Nobody who is from Imo State or who is from Anambra State or who is from Kogi State will want to go to Bruno State. Anybody from Monosto want to walk, no matter how dangerous it is, they want to stay close to where the family is. So a lot of this correctional uh, facility uh, staff, a lot of these police people are people from the same southeast. Suddenly you come up and say, the IPOB are responsible. Show Nigerians the, the, the forensic evidence. When did you conduct the forensic investigation? Wonderful. You have had it also. So what more do you want to hear from me? What more do you want to hear from me? 
How can we as a people pretend that all is well, that we are not seeing what had been happening? The handwriting that had been on the wall all this while. How can we pretend? Somebody must speak up. The government have failed. They should bury their faces in shame. If they have any atom of honor in them, it is high time they resign. Because they have failed. I don't get worried about political stooges who are playing ethnic um, bigotry, saying that people are creating this situation of insecurity to cajole the government or to bring the government to its knees. That is a big lie. Because I remember some people said that they are going to make the governor or the government rather of the previous administration ungovernable. Now somebody made that statement in Nigeria. And somebody made the statement that the baboons and the monkeys will be soaked in blood. So they think that their inability to secure Nigerians is political because it has blown beyond measure. So when you are trying to throw up that argument, just know that you have failed from the beginning and Nigerians have known better. The best thing for this government to do is to resign and let Nigeria be negotiated. In case you're saying Nigeria, Nigerian unity is not negotiable, that is a fallacy and a big lie. Arrant nonsense. Nigeria unity is negotiable. Nigeria unity is negotiable. Let me talk up. We have right to say this is how we want to be. Nigeria unity is negotiable. Let us go back to the table and let us fix our problems. Let us not pretend that all is well. That is just my position. The irreducible minimum people are asking for is for regional government. So that everyone will have their own constitution guiding and protecting them. Have regional security set up. All these things will be solved. Once. But now the same people we say they no agree. Now the same people where they talk say now we won't divide Nigeria. My people, it is high time. We all rise up and fix this. Or else we all will go down with it. I'm signing out. This is me associated Peter, the voice of the people, the voice of God, the voice of our ancestors. Cheers. If you are new on this platform, subscribe, like, follow us on our social media platform. Click on the subscription button and on the bell for notification. Eh? And stay connected to this voice. Stay safe. Bye-bye.